in this video we're going to discuss um, the concept of difference of two sets. So let's say we have two sets A and B then their difference which is written like this um, represents the set of those small a's from big A, so that's just a notational terminology. So all the elements in the set A that are not elements of the other set, of the set B. So that's what difference of two sets is. And you notice here that um, the concept is highly non-symmetric. So A minus B is not going to be the same as B minus A because we're including specifically elements of A and not including elements of B in the difference. Just like the uh, notion of difference of two numbers, which is also uh, highly non-symmetric. Um, now let us look at an example illustrating this. So suppose the set A is the following set. with elements being these dots and let's take a set B to be another set that possibly overlaps A on a certain part but B might have its own elements outside A. So now here's the question is what is going to be the difference of A and B? And if we look at this uh, formal definition, um, it tells us to pick out uh, elements of A, so that's what this left-hand side tells us, but then uh, not all of them, otherwise we would be making the entire set A. We must pick them out in such a way that um, this condition is fulfilled, and that condition is telling us that those elements we pick out cannot be elements of B. So from this picture we can see that this will be exactly this portion of A where we enclose together the elements of A that do not fall at the same time inside B. So on this example the uh, difference of A and B is going to be the blue set here. And of course um, on the same example, we can clearly illustrate why uh, the difference of A and B is going to be the, the same, um, not the same, sorry, as the difference of B and A, because in the other case, if we were taking B minus A, then we would be considering those elements of B that are not in A, so it would be this region. So that would be B um, minus A. Um, now, there is also another notion of difference for sets, which is called a symmetric difference. And this notion fixes the asymmetry we see in this definition. So as we said in this definition, uh, A minus B, on this specific example now, A minus B is this uh, blue set, and B minus A is the gray set. And clearly the blue set and the gray set have nothing in common because in both cases we've been excluding uh, those elements that belong both to A and B. And um, on the other hand, however, now if we take these two uh, sets together, so in other words, if we take the union of them, if we take the union of A minus B and B minus A, we get a set uh, which is called symmetric difference of A and B and is denoted like this, with triangle. In fact, this triangle is supposed to be a Greek uh, capital delta. Um, so that's how um, we represent uh, the union of the two differences, and then we call it a symmetric difference. Because of the symmetry you see on the picture, the way we've dealt with A is the same as the way we've dealt with B in this definition. So that does mean that if I take A uh, delta B, that's not going to be this. That is going to be the same as uh, B delta A. 
So the symmetric difference is a commutative operation, whereas the ordinary difference is not. Um, uh, let us look at another example where um, we consider the possibility of uh, A and B ha having nothing in common. So no elements in common. So let's say this is X and that is Y. And let's say these are the elements of X and those are the elements of Y. Um, so let's use some other colors for that. Um, one of them is yellow and the other one is red. Uh, now in this scenario, uh, the question is what is going to be the ordinary difference and the symmetric difference? So let's compute each of these. So the ordinary difference, um, in, in that we have to pick out the elements of x that are not elements of y. But in this case, nothing from y is an element of x. So we are basically end up picking out all possible elements of x because there is nothing to... Um, to be uh, taken out. There is no element of x that's also an element of y. So x minus y is actually going to be x and y minus x is going to be y for similar reasons. Now what about the symmetric difference? Um, so there, according to the, to the definition, we have to take the union of the two other differences and of course in this case we get x union y. So now you see the notion of symmetric difference now becomes the notion of union in this particular case. Um, so uh, what is interesting about symmetric difference is that we can also represent it in a different way um, as uh, something taken away from the union. So if we look at this picture where the symmetric difference is given by the blue and the gray uh, areas together uh, we can see from this picture that another way we could have seen, uh, we could have obtained the same set what would be to take um, the union of the two, two sets, x and y. On this picture they are a and b. And then to take away from it, in other words to take the usual difference, with um, the overlap of the two. So. The things that do not fall in the symmetric difference are those things that belong both to A and B, right? Those things that belong to only A, they, they fall in A minus B and therefore they fall in the symmetric difference. And those things that belong only to B, they fall in B minus A and then therefore they belong to the symmetric difference. But those things that fall both in A and B, right? They fall neither in, in this one nor in the other one and therefore they do not fall in the symmetric difference either. And these are exactly those elements in the union that don't fall in the symmetric difference. So the symmetric difference then can be defined as the union of x and y minus the um, intersection of x and y. It's another uh, nice formula which uh, has a symmetry of its own. On the left side we've got union, on the right side we've got, we've got intersection. In a way, uh, symmetric difference kind of gives a measure of uh, the distinction between the union of two sets and the intersection of the same two sets. Uh, you can uh, try as an exercise to e establish using formal methods, uh, not using a picture, from the picture it's rather obvious, the, uh, by using formal methods uh, and show using these methods that uh, this set is actually going to be the same as that set when A is X and B is Y, obviously. Um, and um, that's almost it, what I wanted to say about the difference. The other important special case to consider is when one of the sets is empty. Uh, for instance here, if we had y to be the empty set, how would this affect uh, symmetric difference and the ordinary difference? Well, uh, the picture still would be suitable, right? So then if, it's, if that thing is empty, then the only um, difference made to the picture is that we no longer have um, any elements in Y, so we can erase those that belong to Y. And, and so uh, we still have this picture that the two things do not overlap in the sense that they don't have anything common just because Y has nothing in it. And then we see from there uh, that because uh, the empty case, when one of the sets is empty, falls under the case when they don't overlap, then the formulas will be the same. 
except that there will be slight um, way to uh, refine the formulas further. So, uh, namely, um, what we would then have would be that um, the um, x minus y uh, is still equal to x. I'm trying to um, pick the right color here. I want to make it red so that we distinguish it from the previous case. So this is still equal to x, whereas because y is this em empty set, this is going to be the empty set, and then the effect on this will be that since y is the empty set, that the symmetric difference will be equal to x. So that's another useful special case to look at uh, in terms of understanding uh, globally what the difference and the symmetric difference is. Of course, uh, one other case also uh, that's that's interesting to look at is when um, you're taking difference of, of the same set with itself. So when we take x minus x and when we take x delta x. So now following the logic of these definitions, so these are all the elements in x that don't fall in x and uh, every element in x obviously falls in x so we, we will end up with nothing here so this would be the empty set uh, what about this one well that should be the union of uh, in this case x minus x and x minus x but in both of the cases this is empty set so this is also empty set and this is where this um, operation kind of resembles the usual subtraction of numbers because if i subtract a, a number from itself i'm supposed to get zero an empty set is a kind of representation of zero in set theory. So x minus x is, is zero. That's the rule that we can read here. Whereas here, um, in the case when y was the empty set, if, if I take x minus zero in numbers, I'm, I'm supposed to get x, and I'm also getting x here. Um, the analogy fails, of course, with this example, where we have y minus x is, uh, I mean, zero minus x is still zero. Um, and one, on one hand it failed, but on the other hand you can think of it like this. If you only have natural numbers to work with, you don't allow the negative numbers, then uh, 0 minus 5 is supposed to be 0, right? I mean, imagine you've got a box of no apples and you take out 5 apples from, those bo from that box. You can't do that, but uh, let's say you've got a requirement that if you could do that, you, you would have done that, then you will still end up with uh, 0 apples in the box. So that's, in that sense, we can think of 0 minus 5 being still equal to 0. So, um, and, by the way, also in terms of the number of elements, there is a little analogy there. Um, now, the, a, the set A, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, had 8 elements, right? And the set B uh, had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 elements. And the difference of A and B, it doesn't have 8 minus 9 elements. That, that's negative number that would be impossible but if we only consider the uh, part of B that intersects with A right only this part then we can see that the uh, number of elements of A minus B is the same as the number of elements of A overall minus the number of elements in B but only those elements that do fall in set A so in the case when B is a subset of A then the number of elements of the difference will be the difference of the numbers of elements so in this way the set theoretic difference does capture the difference of natural numbers at least. Uh, so that's all for the concept of difference. Thank you for watching the video.